Hello and welcome to Calculus Tutorial. Uh, in this video we are going to take a look at relative extrema. Um, and so what that means is hopefully you can see the word extreme here. Uh, we are going to find extreme values which means the minimums and the maximums. So let's take a closer look at relative extrema and what the what that means. So we're mostly just going to be finding relative maximums and minimums and the key word to look at there is the word relative. Um, so when I look at this function I think maximum. Yes this function does go up to infinity so technically the maximum is infinity. But when I think relative max I just want the point that is higher than all the points around it and so one thing to think of there is simply a hill. Where do we see a hill? And right here we see a hill. So the relative maximum is somewhere around the point negative 2 comma that looks like maybe a 9. And then relative minimum same idea. Yes this function does go down to infinity. But if we want a relative min that will be this point down here and you'll sometimes see that referred to as simply a valley. Looking at hills and we're looking at valleys. And that looks like it's around the point 4, maybe negative 26 or 27. Alright, now where do these hills and valleys happen? They happen at what are called critical points. So as you see right here we have a flat spot the graph flattens out. And the same thing for the minimum, the graph flattens out. And as we've been talking about slope and derivatives, uh, that hopefully connects here, a flat spot is where the derivative is zero. So a hill and a valley will always happen at a critical point, and a critical point, that is where your derivative is equal to zero. And as we keep looking at this, there is one other way a minimum or maximum could happen. That is if your derivative is undefined. We'll see an example of that here and there as well. Usually it's where your derivative is equal to zero, but it could also happen when it's undefined. And that just means when your derivative is zero, you have a flat spot. All right. So the way we start to determine minimums and maximums is with this thing called the first derivative test. So let's take a look at that. The first derivative test. And so with that little intro there with the critical points, that's where your derivative is equal to zero. We're going to be using the derivative to test for minimums and maximums. The reason why we have to do this is oftentimes you don't get a graph. Yes, I know on that example you could easily pick out the maximums and the minimums because you have a graph, but oftentimes you don't get it. So what we're going to have to do is use some analysis with our derivative. So say we have a function, and then that function's derivative. And then this function there is a maximum right there. So we have a max. So what would the derivative be doing around that maximum? Well, here our derivative is zero. So right at the point, the derivative would be zero. But before that point right here, this function is increasing. All right, which means our derivative must be positive. So before this, the derivative must be positive. As you can see, it's above the x-axis. Then what happens? Well, our function is now going down, which means our function is decreasing. Well, that means our derivative must be negative. Something like that. So your derivative was positive, then it was zero for our flat spot, and then the derivative was negative. 
All right, so that means the function was increasing and then decreasing. Increasing and then decreasing. All right, now what would that look like for a minimum? Try to do it kind of right in the same area. So we have something that looks like a valley, kind of like that. So here is our valley right there. Well, again, right at that critical point, the derivative is 0. We have this flat spot. What is happening before that, however? So right here, our function is coming down to the critical point. So we are decreasing, which means our derivative must be negative. So the derivative was down here. After the critical point, now our function is increasing. It's going up. If our function is increasing, that means the derivative must be positive. And so it would have to come up something like that. So this right here are going to be the criteria we're going to be looking for. Because oftentimes when you do this, like I said, you don't get a graph. You do not get this. It would be nice, but you oftentimes don't. So if you want to find, say, a minimum, the characteristic you have to look for is this right here in the derivative. And so as we're doing this, the very first step, if you're looking for a min or max, is to take the derivative. Whoa, I wish I could spell. I'm not sure what happened there. There we go, a derivative. Next, because both of these maxes and mins have a flat spot, the one thing they have in common is the derivative is equal to 0. We have to figure out when is the derivative equal to 0. That tells us where the flat spots are. Once you find those points, they could either be a minimum or a maximum. And so you have to decide what criteria is happening. Is your derivative going from positive to negative? Or is it going from negative to positive? Which one is happening? And what we're going to use to figure that out is something called a sign chart. All right, so let's take a look here at all of that sort of put together in one example. All right, so we're going to use the first derivative test to find relative extrema in this cubic here. Now, yes, I gave us the graph over here as a visual, but usually you don't get that. You have to only use the equation and the numbers. So just ignore the graph on the right side that kind of obviously tells us the answers. So the first thing we do is take the derivative. So this should be pretty easy. We're going to get x squared minus 2x minus 8. And then we have to figure out when is that derivative equal to 0. Those are going to be our flat spots. So to figure out when this quadratic is equal to 0, the first thing you want to do is factor it. Uh, so the numbers that multiply to be negative 8 and add to be negative 2, that will be x minus 4 and x plus 2. And so our solutions here, our two flat spots, are going to be at positive 4 and negative 2. All right, now I have to decide, is this a minimum or a maximum? And is this a minimum or a maximum? And again, don't look at the graph over here, even though that's where the answers are. And so what we do is this thing called a sign chart. We're going to put negative 2 on here. And we're going to put positive 4 on here. It's just a number line. And then we're going to pick numbers on either side of these flat spots. So first, a number to the left of negative 2. You might as well make it easy on yourself. Negative 10. It's a number way over here. 
and plug that into your derivative. You want to see if you get a positive or a negative number. Um, I would plug it into the factored form. It will be a little easier to do it mentally. So negative 10 minus 4 is going to be negative 14. It's a negative number. Negative 10 plus 2 is negative 8, still a negative number. And if I take that negative times another negative, we will get a positive answer. We know right here at negative 2 we're going to get a 0. Now what's the number between negative 2 and 4? Uh, always pick the easiest number, 0. So if I plug in 0, 0 minus 4 is again a negative number. 0 plus 2 is now a positive number. So a negative times a positive is a negative. And then do that one more time. Uh, a number bigger than 4, pick 10. 10 minus 4 is a positive number. And 10 plus 2 is a positive number. And a positive times a positive is positive. Could you have done that with the polynomial up here? Yes, but it's harder mental math because you have to do 10 squared is 100 minus 20 minus 8. That's a little harder to do in your head uh, than it is to plug it into the factored form. All right, well now we should be able to determine what we have here. At negative 2, the derivative is going from a positive to a negative. So that means we are increasing and then decreasing. Increasing and then decreasing. So negative 2 must be a max. And at 4, we're going from negative to positive, which means decreasing to increasing. So 4 must be a min. And as you can see on our graph, negative 2 is in fact a maximum, and positive 4 is in fact a minimum. So we're able to see the same behavior in the graph just through the numbers in the equation. Um, if you actually wanted to figure out what those points were, what is your actual max? It is the point negative 2 comma something. And what is your min? It is the point 4 comma something. If you want to figure out what those y values are, you have to actually plug in the x values here to figure them out. If you want to do that, I'll let you figure out the y values, but for the most important part for us is the first derivative test, which is this process over here.